this lecture is part of an online commutative algebra course and will be about proof of some theorems about dimensions of local rings that we stated in the previous couple of lectures. More precisely, we're going to show that the three definitions of dimension that we gave, so we gave a, um, a definition due to Krull, um, a definition using Hilbert polynomials, and a definition using a system of parameters. So we've got three notions of dimension and what we're doing is proving the following inequalities. So here we have the Kroll dimension again. And um, if we prove these three inequalities, we will prove that all these three notions of dimension are the same. So in the previous lecture, we proved this inequality. What we're going to do this lecture is prove this inequality here, and in the next lecture we will prove that inequality. Um, so before proving this inequality between the Kroll dimension and the Hilbert dimension, um, we're going to have a lemma about um, that quotienting out by a, an element will often reduce the dimension by one. So suppose x is in M and is not a zero divisor. Here M is the maximal ideal of um, a notarian local ring R. So uh, then the Hilbert dimension of um, R over X is less than or equal to the Hilbert dimension of R minus 1. Um, here I write Hilbert dimension for the dimension defined by Hilbert polynomials, which will later turn out to be the same as all the other dimensions. Um, in fact, equality holds, as we will see a little bit later, but for the moment we just want this, this inequality. What this says is that by quotienting out by an element, we'll usually drop the dimension by by one, um, um, provided it's not a unit, in other words, in the maximal ideal, and not a zero divisor. Um, if it is a zero divisor, then this need not hold. So let's just have a quick look at an example. Suppose you take R to be the local ring of kxy modulo xy at the point at the prime ideal where uh, x and y are both equal to zero. So diagrammatically you're taking the local ring at this point and you can see that there are zero divisors because this this variety is is reducible. Um, then if we take x to be the element x here, x is a zero divisor. But if we quotient out by x, it's just the local ring of ky at the, um, the um, ideal where y is equal to zero. And both of these rings have dimension one. You can see if we if we divide quotient out by x, we're just setting x equal to zero. In other words, we're basically looking at the y-axis. So what this is saying is that if you've got two lines, the, the, the two coordinate axes, and you take the sub space where x is equal to naught, the dimension doesn't actually drop by one. So here, these two dimensions would be the same. So that shows that um, why we need to add this assumption that x is not a zero divisor. Um, well, the proof of this, what we do is we write down the following exact sequence. We take naught goes to r, goes to x. This is multiplication by x goes to r. And this, this goes to r over x times r goes to zero. And this is exact as x is not a zero divisor. So this is where we use the condition. Um, and then we, we quotient out by some power of m. So we take r over m to the n, and this maps to r over um, xr intersection m to the n goes to zero, and, um, sorry, not, not intersection, it's generated by those two, and 
um, what we get here is r over um, xr intersection m to the n. And we'll just put a warning as usual, um, this is not in general r over m to the n. Um, in fact, you can see that um, that wouldn't be exact by taking very easy examples. For instance, you take naught goes to the integers localized at 2, you could multiply by 2, the integers localized at 2, and the quotient is z over 2z goes to 0. And um, um, if you look at this example, you can see that uh, if we took r modulo m here, so let's just take m to be the ideal 2 and n to be 1, then um, r over m under multiplication by 2 um, is not a submodule of r over m. So we really do need to um, be a little bit careful about what we quotient out r by there. Um, however, although this isn't equal to m to the n in general, that the filtration x r intersection m to the n is stable um, by the strong Artin-Rees lemma. So what he's saying is that if you're taking a f the filtration by powers of m and intersecting them with a submodule, you don't quite get the intersection. You, you don't quite get powers of m times r here, but you get something pretty close. So what this means is that, um, roughly speaking, saying this stable means it differs from m to the n um, by um, almost a shift. So we have m to the n contains xr intersection m to the n, but this in turn contains m to the n plus k for some fixed k. So up to a finite shift of k, these, the, these two are essentially the same. Well, what this means is that the Hilbert polynomials of these two terms, so we've got naught goes to r over x r intersection m to the n goes to r over m to the n. So we're looking at these two terms. So the, so the Hilbert polynomials are, are each bounded by a shift of the other. So if the two Hilbert polynomials are f and g, we have, would have f of n is less than or equal to g of n is less than or equal to f of n plus k for some fixed k or something like that. So they have the same degree and the same leading coefficient. Um, because th this condition for polynomials implies that f and g must have the same degree and same leading coefficient. So f minus g has smaller degree Well, if we extend this sequence a bit longer we, we get to r over x r goes to zero and because the Hilbert polynomial is additive in short exact sequences um, this is the Hilbert polynomial of r over x r. Um, um, so, um, um, uh, the, 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 this proves the lemma that the Hilbert polynomial of x over x r has degree less than that of the Hilbert polynomial of r, which uh, is what the lemma stated. Um, now that we've got this, we can prove the, that the Kroll dimension is less than or equal to the Hilbert dimension of a local ring. Um, so suppose the Kroll dimension is greater than or equal to n. So we want to prove we then want to show that the Hilbert dimension 
is also greater than or equal to n, and this will be enough to, to prove this inequality. So what we do is we pick p0 contained in p1 up to pn, where these are primes in the ring, and we can we can find the chain of strictly increasing primes of length n because the Kroll dimension is at least n by assumption. Um, and we may as well quotient by p0 so we can assume p0 equals 0, so the ring is an integral domain because p0 is prime. And now what we do is we pick x in p1 but not in p0. Um, we notice that x is not a zero divisor um, because we've quotient it out by p0, so, um, so we're, we're working with an integral domain. So, so this is actually x is just a non-zero element of p1. And now we have the Hilbert dimension of R is strictly greater than the Hilbert dimension of R over XR by the lemma that we proved, um, which is greater than or equal to the Kroll dimension of R over XR, and this follows by induction on N, and this is greater than or equal to N minus 1 because we've got a chain P1 up to P um, um, n, sorry, p1 over x up to pn over x. So we've got a chain of n minus, of length n minus 1. And the key point here is that this inequality here is strict. And all, so, so, so this shows that the um, Hilbert dimension of R is strictly bigger than n minus 1, so the Hilbert dimension is at least equal to n, which is what we wanted to show. So this shows that the Kroll dimension is at most the Hilbert dimension. So what we're going to do in the next lecture is complete this by showing that the dimension defined by system of parameters is at most the Kroll dimension.